This morning's talk uh, is about uh, uh, salvage uh, options uh, uh, for uh, uh, people uh, who had uh, already definitive therapy for prostate cancer. Uh, as uh, shown in here, uh, there uh, has been uh, increasing use of uh, prostatectomy radiotherapy uh, for a locally advanced and very high risk prostate cancer uh, worldwide. Well, because of that, uh, uh, there are, uh, certainly is a increasing need for a salary therapy. But uh, uh, when we apply a, or indicate salary therapy, we've got to think a lot of things. But uh, at least in theory, uh, since uh, it has a, well, it, it has to deal with a recurrent tumor, uh, expectant uh, management option uh, won't be enough. Uh, well, a consideration. So uh, expected management may not apply, uh, certainly, uh, to recurrent diseases. So uh, basically, we should deal with high-risk patients, high-risk diseases. But uh, uh, in the world literature, uh, salvage therapy options, uh, this is from a paper, uh, Urological Oncology, and only uh, 2 to 3 percent of patients who present with recurrence after radiotherapy, for example, receive uh, local or salvage therapy. Uh, and 97 to 80 uh, percent managed, uh, usually managed with observation or uh, palliation with ADT. Well, uh, uh, 49 percent uh, with ob observation and 46 percent with ADT and only 1.5% uh, uh, with uh, definitive therapy, including a brachytherapy, salvage brachytherapy, and prostatectomy. So uh, now uh, I would like to introduce uh, some uh, complicated surgeries uh, after prostatectomy. Well, uh, before starting, uh, I would like to know how many of you are non-urologists? Yes, okay. Well, thank you very much for your being here. I like it. Well, you know, oh, since uh, they all had the recurrence after a prostatectomy, they are a high risk again, uh, biologically, as I said, uh, but uh, at the same time, technically, uh, really demanding, uh, biologically and technically. So uh, that's a high risk. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to mention about, I'd like to talk about a prostatectomy. You know, oh, well, sort of an interesting uh, situation. Uh, prostatectomy after prostatectomy. So that's what I'm going to show. Well, uh, here uh, uh, comes a, a gentleman, 56 year old, uh, very, uh, very young, and diagnosed uh, in country X. I don't mean England. Uh, diagnosed in country X, uh, initial PSA 13, and Gleason score 6, uh, only one, one out of six scores are positive, a T1C, uh, meaning uh, early stage uh, prostate cancer. He underwent uh, a laparoscopic uh, prostatectomy in that country, and, uh, but uh, uh, because of uh, rising PSA after surgery, he visited me uh, two years later, and PSA at that time was 1.5 uh, potent, but incontinent. And uh, multi-parametric MRI, that's a standard uh, test for uh, prostate cancer, uh, shows like uh, this uh, thing. Something in there uh, down uh, the bladder and, uh, well, seminal vesicles, uh, like uh, uh, structures still remains. And a uh, side view uh, of the prostate, uh, I mean, uh, uh, pelvis uh, shows uh, prostate and seminal vesicles. Uh, this is bizarre. And we took biopsy from uh, that part, and it turns out to be a glycine score uh, 7, 5 out of uh, 18 cores positive. And the prostatic volume was very small, uh, 6.10. Uh, well, uh, he, uh, his PSA went up uh, further, and uh, actually I contacted the uh, doctor in charge in that country and, uh, well, uh, uh, asked him uh, to send me uh, pathological information. 
And uh, well, uh, interestingly, that document shows uh, a perfect uh, PT2 uh, non uh, glycine score six and margin negativity, et cetera, et cetera. So I was, I just wondered why. And uh, uh, well, because of his age, we had a long, long, long discussion with him and he opted for, uh, went for a prostatectomy, a salvage. Again, his PSA looked like this. Well, uh, here uh, you see uh, some uh, videos uh, uh, during his surgery, uh, laparoscopic again, and uh, we also have a robot. Uh, we had a discussion about it uh, yesterday, but we have uh, a robot, and uh, we uh, it's up to the preference of surgeon. I uh, prefer to do laparoscopic most of the times, and uh, but uh, in a uh, posterior ap approach, uh, well, uh, this is to identify, uh, correctly identify seminal vesicles. I usually <laughs> use anterior approach, but uh, in, in, in his case, uh, I opted for the posterior approach. But uh, during that the surgery, uh, I didn't notice any, any adhesion at all. Well, uh, oh, probably. I can use this mouse. How can I proceed? Well, this uh, video clip uh, is a bit redundant, so I'd like to... Oh, here. Mouse. <laughs> Well, uh, if I can have a technical assistance. Yes, move faster. No, I don't know how to do that. Anybody else? Ah, it it's doesn't here. appear here. Does it not? No, I'd like to use oh, the mouse. He just wants to just. Oh. Can't use, you can't no. use the mouse. No, you because you weren't presenting, you can't. Use you can? You can. And how? It usually goes down uh, here, but it doesn't. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Can't use that mouse. Okay, okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, anyway, uh, you know, oh. No. Well, uh, after uh, uh, transecting uh, the bladder neck, and uh, then uh, you see some mess in here. Uh, I think that's a peripheral zone, a uh, remaining peripheral zone. I'll try to find a correct plane uh, in between bladder uh, wall and uh, peripheral zone. And here uh, we have uh, a similar vessel again. And uh, back to the, the anterior part of the gland again. And then uh, we change uh, to find the plane again. Well, uh, the difficulty of the surgery, uh, this surgery, this sort of a surgery, is a, a we cannot uh, uh, rely on the landmark, an anatomical uh, landmark, but uh, uh, we can manage uh, to find the correct plane in between bladder wall and uh, peripheral zone. Uh, here you see a whole peripheral zone. Then we, can, we could uh, uh, dissect and find a seminal vesicle.
There you go. Well, uh, the uh, rest of the procedure uh, is a, an eventful, uh, is except uh, the part of the apex. Apex was uh, a very adhesive. Certainly, they did something there. Mm -hmm. Right here. Oh, doesn't work uh, very well. Sorry for that. I'm not uh, used to. Well, uh, what I would like to sh uh, show here is a, a removal of the uh, prostate and the re re uh, repairing. Uh, but uh, four days later, unfortunately, he developed a rectal operation and leading to uh, peritonitis. And uh, because of the ischemia uh, caused by uh, this section, uh, well, uh, perforated the rectum, I, I think. Well, are you, uh, probably you are aware, uh, you are aware of the uh, anterior part of the urethral stump is gone. Uh, that's why uh, he has a, a incontinence. Uh, but then, uh, uh, fortunately, we could save him. And, uh, uh, well, uh, the lesson I, I, uh, we had uh, at that time was uh, we should uh, uh, offer him uh, to have a colost colostomy in, in advance. But, uh, uh, well, uh, my point here is uh, this sort of a surgery is technically, at least technically feasible. This is a quite unusual case, I dare say. Well, uh, uh, the second uh, case I'd like to show here uh, is another uh, complicated surgery after prostatectomy. And uh, sometimes we encounter uh, uh, the uh, advanced uh, bladder tumor uh, a couple of years later, uh, after a uh, uh, prostatectomy. And uh, in, in this situation, we uh, indicated the steward's pouch. Uh, that is an orthotopic uh, bladder uh, construction. 67 years old, uh, and uh, he is uh, very motivated to have orthotopic bladder. And uh, before uh, sur uh, surgery, he was totally continent. And before proceeding, uh, we contacted uh, uh, Dr. Will Studer at the time, and uh, his recommendation at the time was if uh, the patient is totally continent, go for it. And if he's, he's not, uh, just forget about it. And either continent uh, uh, is recommended. Uh, since he, uh, the patient himself had uh, a co a total, uh, total continent, so uh, uh, continence, and uh, we proceed uh, to uh, for a steward's pouch. The surgery itself uh, is totally uneventful. And, uh, uh, well, he had previously, uh, 80 years ago, uh, laparoscopic prostatectomy, but uh, we didn't encounter any adhesions at all. You see rectal wall very uh, easily dissected. Well, this is down the denobilis fascia, but uh, uh, of course uh, down uh, down the uh, mm. as you see here, uh, there is no skull formation at all. Uh, DVC it looks like this, and very well. Uh, uh, if uh, probably you you cannot imagine, he had uh, once uh, this. Uh, Violated, uh, being violated uh, with this place. Well, uh, I'd like to take any questions during the uh, procedure and uh, uh, during the videos, if you like. And uh, in the, uh, well, uh, in the, well, technically, uh, we, when we uh, dissect uh, the apex, uh, we 
what we call a lateral approach uh, procedure uh, is conducted. Uh, this is a, uh, we insert uh, the camera from uh, uh, the port down below, on the uh, right uh, down below pelvis. So this way we can uh, have an, uh, a very clear view of the uh, side of the urethra like this. And uh, this enables us uh, to preserve uh, the length of the urethra as, as long as possible. Anyway, the surgery went uh, totally uneventful, and he didn't uh, uh, bother with the rectal injury at all. So this uh, could be done. Well, uh, but uh, after the surgery, he had uh, an anastomotic stricture, but after incision, uh, he, he's just fine, and totally continent, and no recurrence since then, uh, already a couple of years, uh, three years maybe, just fine. Well, uh, next case I would like to show here uh, is a, a contractive bladder and tumor. Sixty-nine years old, uh, initial PSA 16.2, Gleason score uh, pretty high, 10, five out of uh, eight cores positive, uh, clinical T3A. Uh, he had uh, open prostatectomy and extended lymph node dissection uh, over uh, 10 years ago. And uh, uh, because of his uh, uh, pathology, and he underwent uh, adjuvant radiotherapy, 67 degree as, uh, grades. Well, uh, he had multiple uh, complications uh, later on, and urethral stricture, uh, anastomotic uh, stricture, and radiation cystitis, uh, necessitating uh, multiple uh, sessions of hyperbaric therapy, and also contracted bladder, uh, the capacity less than 100, and uh, also repeated uh, pubic osteomyelitis, and uh, because of that, uh, uh, he was managed to have a DJ stent bilaterally. But uh, uh, during uh, the, um, pro uh, uh, well, uh, uh, he, later, uh, right side was removed uh, inadvertently, and then he, he had right, right nephrostomy. But uh, uh, above all, uh, then uh, he had, uh, he developed a, a bladder tumor, uh, plus uh, uh, some uh, uh, positivity in his uh, wash cytology from uh, left uh, uh, GU unit. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, he has a bladder tumor, CIS, uh, uh, plus uh, urethral tumor. And uh, we offered him uh, to have uh, uh, a laparoscopic radical, radical cystectomy. Again, he had uh, uh, surgery before uh, plus radiotherapy. And uh, uh, this section itself was really tough in his case because of the adhesion. For example, the anomalous dissection was almost impossible, and left side uh, dissection was really tough, uh, totally obliterated uh, with the scar tissues. Well, we could manage to find a left ureter, fortunately. You see the that t uh, change in tissue here. Here you see a left ureter. But that's it. It was really tough for us to find a correct plane, all frozen. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, anteriorly, you see here a uh, bladder. Uh, we inadvertently open the bladder. So uh, uh, you may think uh, uh, curability for him is uh, out of question. And uh, uh, you see here, uh, uh, down uh, below the pubic bone, uh, all scar tissues around. But I would like to show here uh, the thickness of the bladder. is very thin. Very thin. You see here, very thin, isn't it? Well, this is a long, long, long surgery. And since we had a lesson uh, about the uh, delayed uh, rectal perforation, uh, we offered him uh, to have a colostomy in advance at the same time. Rectal wall is ischemic and uh, adhesive and uh, covered with scar tissues. All we had to do at the time was cut, cut, cut. Yes, yes, but uh, you know, we s made uh, uh, colostomy at the same time, so uh, nothing happened, totally uneventful. So a uh, uh, bladder uh, could be removed. And uh, in the, uh, this is a review uh, in the world literature and the wealth culture. Uh, well, a trophic bladder is nothing but a uh, disease, a condition of vasculature and caused by radi radiation therapy. So uh, uh, probably, you know, in the, uh, uh, at least a textbook statement, uh, probably they may offer uh, to have a, a augmentation of, bl of the bladder. Uh, I dare say augmentation option uh, should, uh, sh should be a bad idea. Uh, there's no chance uh, to get it healed. And uh, he has a grade four uh, contracted bladder. And here you see the HE, uh, all scar tissues. Well, next one is uh, oligometastasis. As you know, uh, oligometastasis uh, itself uh, is a a condition uh, between uh, localized diseases and uh, uh, disseminated uh, metastasis. And, well, uh, the, the idea of oligo oh, is not uh, uh, new at all, at all. And it's been increasingly diagnosed more recently because, number one, closer patient monitoring, and number two, improved detection of limited diseases and emerging uh, therapies that can prolong survival. Well, it's been said uh, there is an uh, oligo or metastasis has uh, some distinct biological differences, but I'm not certain about it. So, we, first of all, uh, we've got to prove uh, whether it has a distinct uh, biological differences. But uh, they say uh, oligo has uh, distinct biological differences. Well, here uh, comes the case. Uh, uh, Again, open radical prostatectomy, Gleason score 9, PT3B is seminal vesicle invasion, uh, margin positive. And uh, because of uh, his pathology, he had uh, adjuvant radiotherapy again, 68 grays. And uh, it was all right uh, for a while, but uh, he suffered from a gradually increasing PSA. And uh, uh, Pelvic lymph node uh, development was detected uh, at the uh, side of uh, right uh, iliac uh, artery, and the SRT to that part, uh, salvage radiotherapy to that part was applied, 54 grays. Uh, then uh, uh, PSA went down again, but then uh, re rise again. And uh, we offered him to have a colon pet, 
he shows here uh, this, uh, this thing. And uh, it was uh, positive with choline PET. We uh, took on a biopsy from that area. A biopsy uh, turned out to be Gleason score 5 plus 4, two more. And since we do not have uh, a PSMA PET at home, and uh, we offered him to have a whole body MRI, negative. Well, again, uh, transperitoneal laparoscopic approach. You know, uh, it, is, uh, it is very bizarre for me. You know, he had an, uh, heavily treated with radiotherapy before, uh, as I said, but uh, basically zero tissue reactions around. Didn't work. <laughs> What uh, I'm trying to say here is how uh, radiation effect differs I from individual to individual. Uh, you know, uh, this raises a question about immune uh, response uh, with radiotherapy. Uh, maybe, uh, well, if uh, some of you are from the radiation department, uh, probably you can ha answer that, que uh, that question. But uh, I really am... Uh, uh, Fascinated uh, by the, uh, well, uh, what I, I would like to show, say here is how we can augment radiation effect. Well, uh, anyway, it, there seems to be no tissue reactions at all in this case. Here you see a, a tumor, tumor mass, and we took uh, that out. Well, uh, well, after uh, the surgery, uh, the PSA went down uh, to zero, almost zero, but uh, uh, pathology shows a Gleason score 5 uh, plus 4, but unfortunately, he had uh, one millimeter margins. And uh, PSA went up again at 0 0.7 uh, at three weeks and 0 0.9 at three months. And one year later, he de developed uh, disseminated mal uh, metastasis. So uh, uh, we did uh, uh, search in the world literature, uh, extended uh, salvage leaf node dis dissection. Well, the only predictor they could find uh, was uh, the Gleason score. Uh, 6 to 7 versus 8 to 10. Since he had a uh, high Gleason score, uh, 9, uh, probably uh, we cannot, we couldn't rely solely on uh, oligo metastasectomy. Uh, we should apply something. But then he was uh, well. Uh, he didn't want to have uh, ADT at the same time. So sorry for him. But uh, this uh, uh, case provides food for thought. And uh, uh, at least uh, uh, in the world literature, a five-year uh, biochemical control rate is around 30%. And uh, especially uh, the, uh, with a lower grade uh, prostate cancer recurrence. Well, uh, oligometastasis uh, tumor, uh, the purpose uh, to control cancer and uh, number two, to slow down any further metastasis. And of course, uh, well, they say avoiding and uh, delaying the toxicity associated with systemic therapy, uh, that is ADT and chemo. But uh, I believe I myself have a bias. Uh, this uh, endpoint itself is an, uh, to me a very elusive and very weak endpoint. Uh, we should uh, think about uh, to co how we can control our cancer. Well, uh, another case here, a uh, complicated surgery. Uh, basically, he had, uh, again, a prostatectomy plus SRT. And uh, because of uh, uh, his advanced uh, bladder tumor, we offered him to have an cystectomy. Transperitoneal uh, view of uh, a pelvic floor and here you see a severe adhesion of ileum. At first I thought this, this, uh, that this section should be easy, 
but it was not. Again, uh, I myself am uh, a bit wondering why such reaction, tissue reaction changes, differs from patient to patient, from individual to individual. Uh, something should be there. Well, uh, uh, the whole structure covers a bladder. Uh, the dissection was really tough. This part was all right. We can dissect it. You see here, on uh, here, uh, covered with scar tissues are all all covered with scar scar tissue. Well, we could manage to dissect. Anyway. And uh, the rest of the procedure was also tough. And uh, bladder, uh, rectal wall, and uh, the same story. But we could manage it. Modem. cancer, uh, colon cancer, testis cancer, uh, kidney cancer. Uh, this statement is from the literature, but uh, more recently I heard uh, uh, in a randomized controlled trials with uh, colon cancer, uh, a site reductive uh, surgery, the effect, efficacy of site reduction uh, in colon cancer uh, has become in question. Uh, I may be wrong. And the uh, role of uh, surgery in metastatic prostate cancer is also not uh, yet established. But uh, uh, this concept has been revisited uh, by Axel Heidenreich uh, from Germany. And a couple of uh, papers uh, in the world literature, uh, Heidenreich, uh, retrospective, though uh, they showed uh, some advantage with uh, metastasectomy, I mean, a site reduction of the tumor, a primary tumor. And Stuber uh, uh, et al. Uh, did uh, prospective uh, case control studies, uh, but they didn't find any difference at all. In HORA trial, uh, they used uh, primary, AD, uh, primary radiotherapy to the uh, uh, prostate uh, plus ADT versus ADT, and they didn't show any difference in terms of overall survival. And the uh, subgroup analysis shows some, uh, some hint, uh, some su suggestion. Uh, when uh, when the tumor uh, volume is low, uh, there may be some uh, benefit. In a stampede uh, trial, uh, the same, ADT plus ra radiotherapy versus ADT alone, uh, there seems to be some difference uh, in low tumor burden cases. But we've got to be very careful in its interpretation, I believe. Here comes my case, uh, 60 years old. Uh, he is a general surgeon himself. And, uh, well, uh, well, I'm, I'm biased about general surgeon. Uh, general surgeon mentality is take it away. Uh, very simple and brave. And he was, at that time, just hellbent, hellbent uh, to remove it. And PSA was way high, 182. Gleason score of 5 plus 4, 12 out of 12 cores, positive. He had uh, pelvic lymph nodes uh, swelling and uh, plus a solitary bone metastasis. Well, uh, after a long discussion, uh, I, uh, I myself was a bit uh, reluctant, uh, but then I offered him uh, to have a combined blockade uh, by calutamide plus uh, agonist uh, uh, plus uh, DTX uh, dostaxel six courses. And his PSA went uh, to zero almost, and uh, MRI appearance uh, uh, of tumor uh, just disappeared. Well, uh, at least uh, complete remission uh, uh, on imaging studies. But uh, uh, pathology did show a remnant uh, of tumor, a Gleason score, uh, interestingly, 4 plus 3 is 7, and, but uh, seminal vesicle invasion, margin positive, uh, plus uh, nodal involvement. 
Well, uh, this case also uh, provided me food for thought. Well, uh, in the case of UC advanced uh, urothelial uh, cancer, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Harry Hur uh, from Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, once told, uh, stated uh, this uh, document. And uh, well, the uh, situation is a bit different. Uh, his situation is for a surgical consolidation for metastatic UC. Uh, but uh, I think uh, we can use the, uh, the analogy in, in the case of uh, uh, site reductive surgery in prostate cancer. So uh, if we apply uh, uh, this uh, surgery, uh, number one must be technically feasible. Uh, feasibility is there, uh, and uh, with a modern technology, we can do uh, at least uh, uh, not perfect, maybe, but uh, we can uh, we can resect remove the tumor, technically feasible, that's for sure. Uh, but um, unfortunately, surgery alone, uh, salvage, uh, is uh, considered to be, uh, to be nearly zero, so zero possibility uh, with uh, surgery alone. Of course, a systemic chemotherapy uh, first, and uh, uh, then, uh, uh, well, uh, in uh, metastatic UC cases, systemic uh, chemo first, and if uh, he has or she has a CR complete uh, response, then uh, go for it. That's a uh, co whole concept of. But uh, I dare say, if we do not have any adjuvant uh, or adjuvant uh, therapy together with site reduction, that's a sort of an, uh, not a good idea uh, to go for it. Uh, so uh, site reduction itself uh, doesn't cure the patient, uh, though it is feasible technically, and the site reduction plus something should be needed. That's my, my take. So uh, uh, this is an example. Latitude trial uh, shows uh, some advantage with abiratron uh, plus ADT versus ADT alone. Well, uh, we just follow uh, him uh, with AD, uh, abiratron uh, uh, based on this latitude trial. Well, uh, this cartoon illustrates uh, uh, prototype of Da Vinci machine. Interestingly, it, it was depicted, uh, illustrated uh, in 1921, almost 100 years ago. Well, uh, you know, it may take another uh, couple of years, at least uh, uh, 10 years, uh, 20 years, uh, or 50 years, but uh, we are moving into the di uh, right direction. But uh, we've got to think uh, about uh, what, uh, what surgery has uh, in the future. But uh, I dare say, we sh surgeons should be more, uh, um, I mean, uh, wiser uh, to incorporate surgical technique into future uh, treatment uh, with the use of, um, uh, well, uh, again, uh, uh, te techniques there already, it's feasible, but still, surgery alone is not need, uh, good enough and sufficient. That's my take. Well, uh, that's all, and uh, this is uh, a, a Tokyo Tower, uh, just like an Eiffel Tower in Paris, and decorated uh, in, in color uh, for us all, uh, well, uh, ready to welcome uh, Summer Olympic Games next year. Uh, all of you are welcome. Uh, thank you very much.